brought to you by Charity Mobile, the phone company that sends 5% of your monthly plan price to your favorite charity. No contracts, nationwide coverage, risk-free guarantee. Learn more at CharityMobile.com. I have something a little bit different today from the writing collections of the popes. I'm going to provide to you some excerpts, a couple of selected chapters from the Pastoral Rule, Book 1, of the writings of Pope St. Gregory the Great. When most of the time when people speak of his writings, they talk about his book, The Moralia of Job, which is an enormous tome. And I will probably venture in and out of that book in the future, too. But his pastoral rule has some uh, choice words for the prelates of the church today. For those men who push their synod on synodality and who break the, the justice of God away and hide it in the name of his mercy, showing that they do not understand either his justice nor his mercy in so doing. Those prelates who would use the church for their own purposes, those prelates who would teach error because they have power and believe they can get away with it. He has choice words for them in this document. And so I'll bring you, I'll give you a few of his relatively short chapters here that are a warning to him to not use the church for your own purposes, but instead to preserve the faith. What a novel concept. That the unskillful venture not to approach an office of authority. No one presumes to teach an art till he has first, with intent meditation, learned it. What rashness is it then for the unskillful to assume pastoral authority, since the government of souls is the art of souls? For who can be ignorant that the sores of the thoughts of men are more secret than the sores of the bowels? And yet how often do men have no knowledge whatever of spiritual precepts, fearlessly profess themselves physicians of the heart? Though those who are ignorant of the effects of medication blush to appear as physicians of the flesh. But because, through the ordering of God, all the highest in rank of this present age are inclined to reverence religion. There are some who, through the outward show of rule within the Holy Church, affect the glory of distinction. They desire to appear as teachers. They covet superiority to others. And as the truth attests, they seek the first salutations in the marketplace, the first rooms at feasts, the first seats in assemblies, being all the less able to administer worthily the office they have undertaken of pastoral care, as they have reached the magisterial position of humility out of elation only. For indeed, in a magisterial position, language itself is confounded when one thing is learned and another taught. Against such the Lord complains by the prophet, saying, They have reigned and not by me. They have been set up as princes, and I knew it not. See Hosea chapter 8 verse 4. For those reign of themselves, and not by the will of the supreme ruler, who, supported by no virtues, and in no way divinely called, but inflamed by their own desire, seize rather than attain supreme rule. But them the judge within both advances, and yet knows not. For whom by permission he tolerates them, surely by the judgment of reprobation he ignores. Whence to some who come to him, even after miracles, he says, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I know you not who you are. See Luke chapter 13, verse 27. The unskillfulness of shepherds is rebuked by the voice of truth, when it is not said through the prophet, The shepherds themselves have not known understanding. See Isaiah chapter 56, verse 11. Whom again the Lord denounces, saying, And they that handled the law knew me not. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 8. And therefore the truth complains of not being known of them, and protests that he knows not the principality of those who know him not. Because in truth, th th these who know not the things of the Lord are, known of, are unknown of the Lord. As Paul attests, who says, But if any man knows not, he shall not be known. See 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 38. Yet this unskillfulness of the shepherds doubtless suits often the deserts of those who are subject to them, because though it is their own fault that they have not the light of knowledge, yet it is in the dealing of strict judgment that through the, their ignorance, those also who follow them should stumble. Hence it is that, in the gospel, the truth in person says, If the blind lead the blind, both fall into the ditch. See Matthew chapter 15, verse 14. Hence the psalmist, not expressing his own desire, but in his ministry as a prophet, denounces such when he says, 
Let their eyes be blinded that they see not, and ever bow down their back. See Psalm 68, verse 24. For indeed, those persons are eyes who, placed in the very face of the highest dignity, have undertaken the office of spying out the road. And while those who are attached to them and follow them are denominated backs, and so when the eyes are blinded, the back is bent. Because when those who go before lose the light of knowledge, those who follow are bowed down to carry the burden of their sins. That none should enter on a place of government who practice not in life what they have learned to study. There are some also who investigate spiritual precepts with cunning care, but what they penetrate with their understanding they trample on in their lives. All at once they teach the things which not by practice but by study they have learned, and what in words they preach by their manners they impugn. Whence it comes to pass that when the shepherd walks through the steep places, the flock follows to the precipice. Hence it is that the Lord through the prophet complains of the contemptible knowledge of shepherds, saying, when you yourselves had drunk most pure water, you fouled the residue with your feet. And my sheep feed on that which had been trodden by your feet, and drank that which your feet had fouled. See Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 18 to 19. For indeed the shepherds drink most pure water, when with a right understanding they imbibe the streams of truth. But to foul the same water with their feet is to corrupt the studies of holy meditation by evil living. And verily the sheep drink the water fouled by their feet, when any of those subject to them follow not the words which they hear, but only imitate the bad examples which they see. Thirsting for the things said, but twisted by the works observed, they take in mud with their draughts, as from polluted fountains. Hence also it is written through the prophet, A snare for the downfall of my people are evil priests. See Hosea chapter 5 verse 1 and chapter 9 verse 8. Hence again the Lord says through the prophet of the priests, They are made to be for a stumbling block of iniquity to the house of Israel. For certainly no one does more harm in the church than one who has the name and rank of sanctity while he acts twist in a twisted manner. For him, when he transgresses, no one presumes to take to task. And the offense spreads forcibly. For example, when out of reverence to his rank the sinner is honored. But all who are unworthy would fly from the burden of so great guilt if with the attentive ear of the heart they weighed the sentence of the truth. Whoever shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it would be better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and he were, and he were tossed into the depths of the sea. See Matthew chapter 18, verse 6. By the millstone is expressed the round and labor of the worldly life, and by the depth of the sea is denoted final condemnation. Whosoever then, having come to bear the outward show of sanctity either by word or example, destroys others. It had indeed be, been better for him that earthly deeds and open guise should press him down into his final judgment that the sacred offices should point him out to others as imitable in his wrongdoing, because surely if he fell alone, the pains of perdition would torment him in more tolerable degree. That's Pope St. Gregory the Great, the first couple of chapters of his pastoral rule. And you can tell quite plainly that the problem of evil priests was very much around in his own time, and Pope St. Gregory the Great was writing in the first millennia of the church. Some things never change, it seems. Of course, in those times, wicked priests were not aided <laughs> in their wickedness by, their, by the Holy Father. So, let me know if you want me to continue with this document in the future. If so, I will bring you chapter the next few chapters probably in the month of September. Let me know what you thought of this in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help. So to sharing this on social media, that helps too. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.